again to another Java short tutorial and in this tutorial I'm going to talk about vectors so what are vectors? well vectors are essentially arrays with one big difference is where the size of the array can never change uh, the size of the vector will actually grow along with the content so without further ado let's just dig straight in I've already created a project and a sample file so, how do we create a vector? Well, very simple. There's a few ways to declare it. The easiest way is to just say uh, vector vec1 equals new vector. And naturally we need to import this from the java.util library. So, a other way, so basically now we have created a basic vector uh, in which we can add objects. Uh, not primitive values. If you add primitive values they will be uh, converted to the object equivalent of the primitive value as you will see later. Um, so yeah basically I've created a vector that has a certain size and will actually grow along with whatever I put in there. So other way of declaring it will be vector vec2 equals new vector and then indicate the size of the vector. So basically right now I have a uh, vector of size 10 and the last way would be uh, vector 3 equals new vector in which I indicate the starting size and the increment size. So basically when the vector hits 10 elements it will increase the size automatically by 5 until it hits that again and then increase by 5 again. So yeah those are the basic ways of declaring a vector. Um, like I said, uh, vectors can contain objects and uh, the way the vector is now it can be any object, but sometimes we want to indicate what kind of object is going to be in there. So say for example, if I want my vector to only contain integers, I add the sharp brackets and then the data type. So right now this vector can only contain integers say if I wanted to contain a other type of object so let's let's just uh, copy something from an earlier video for example yeah the person object which was a superclass if I remember correctly yep it is so let's copy this to the other project okay so say if I want this vector to only have person objects same thing, I indicate the data type of person. Okay, so now let's do some examples. So I'm gonna delete these for now and start with my integer array. So right now I have a array of the size uh, of, uh, uh, sorry, array. I have a vector that can contain integers and say if I want to add some values, well I, I simply say vec1 dot add and then I need to provide a value of the appropriate data type, so 42 which is an integer and another value 7 and basically whenever I use the add method to add a value it will be added to the end, uh, to the outer end of the uh, vector, meaning the first one I add will be under index 0 the second one I add will be under index 1, uh, very much like an array. Like I said, I am limited to the data type that I've defined if I use this declaration. So if I want to add a string, then obviously I get, a, I get an error message, which is uh, add integer is not applicable for argument string. Okay, so I must be adding uh, integer values. Okay, so now let's uh, take a look how many values are there in our array. This can be done by saying vec1.size, which returns the size. And if you want to know what is the actual size of the vector at this point, You can take a look at the capacity, meaning the number of elements that we can fit in the vector right now. So the actual hidden size of the array. Array, I keep on saying array, vector. So for that we can say vec1.capacity. 
So now let's run this. So size is 3. Why? Because there's three values inside the vector. And we have a capacity of 10. So at this point, uh, the default length of the vector is 10. So say if I were to add some more values, I'm just simply going to do that by copying. So right now there should be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And let's see what it resizes to then. Okay, so if now size 11 and capacity of 20, so the vector has automatically internally resized itself. Okay, let's go back to three values. Okay, so what if I want to display a certain value from this vector? Well, very simple. Um, very much like uh, what we do with an array. Uh, value 0. What I say is, well, the vector name dot get and indicate the index number of the values I value I want to display. So in this case, index 0. So now, if I run this, we have size 3, capacity 10, and the value is 42, which is the first value I set. Uh, naturally, I can also print out the value under index 2, which is the third value I added. So that's 35. And say if I try and push it a bit too far, so let's say the value of 4, it will basically say array index out of bounds exception. Why? Because there's no such thing as index number 4 at this point. So that's actually the same thing as with a array. Okay, so now let's let's do this with a uh, person object. So I'm going to change my vec1 to person. I can have to peek at the overloaded constructor of person for a moment. So name, age, address, phone number. Well, it's a bit much. So let's just cut uh, some of these attributes for a moment. Because else I'm going to spend a lot of time typing for this particular tutorial. So that one gets to go as well. And the getters and setters, naturally. Okay, no errors, so that's fine. Let's go back here. So, person p1 equals new person John Smith, age 31. So again, if I want to add this person, I simply say vec1 dot add p1. So, if I want to create another person, Person P2. Let's just, just copy this to hurry up a bit more. So we have Jane Smith, age 28, which is named P2. So it becomes vec1.add P2. So now basically, um, After I've executed these these lines, I have a vector size of two. And just to prove that, I'm going to use the vec1.size method again. So there we go, size is two. So yeah, what you have seen so far is the um, adding of values, uh, the um, retrieving of values, but we can also remove values. So, say if we have person 1, we have person 2 added, and I want to delete uh, a value from the vector. I, for example, I can say a vector remove index 0. It will actually remove the... It will actually remove the... In, it will actually remove um, P1, leaving us with a, a vector size of 1. So now if I were to um, get index 0, which is a person object, and print the name, by right it should be Jane Smith. Yeah, there we go. So it's not size, it's name. 
So yeah, basically when I removed John using remove index 0, uh, Jane actually got pushed forward to index 0. So, okay. Um, the other thing we can do is say if I want to remove uh, Jane, I can do that by the index number, which would be 1 in this case. But I can also do that by saying, okay, just remove this object. And in this particular case, if I do this, it will remove the first instance of the object. So if I have this object multiple times in the vector, uh, only the first one will be removed. Okay, so now if I run this by right, it should print John Smith again. So there we go. And just to prove that Jane was indeed deleted, let's use the size attribute one more time. So there we go, size is 1, John Smith, because Jane was removed using the uh, remove uh, method, using the object as the parameter. If I want to clear everything, what I can do is say remove all elements. So now, basically, uh, this will cause an error. The size should be 0 if I run this, and yes, there you go, the size is indeed 0. So let's see uh, what else we can do. Um, yeah, if you want you can determine the uh, first and last element. So, say if I, I maintain those two objects in my vector. And I'm even going to add a third one, because that would be a bit more interesting. So the new person would be uh, Pete Black, uh, 29, add P3 to it. So the vector size should now be 3. So now if I say, OK, um, Let's do this in two lines, just to make it more clear. So vector1, or vec1, uh, can you give me the first element, uh, which will be a person object, because only person objects can be in there, so p0. And let's print out the name of p0. So again, by right, this should be uh, John. So there you go, size is 3, John Smith. Uh, we can get the last element as well. So let's run this again. So the last element is now stored as P0 and then printed. So that will be uh, Pete Black. Um, yeah, what else can we do? Um, if you want to search for a certain uh, object uh, or know where it is, uh, you can, for example, use the index off. So you say vec1 index off. And then you say, okay, I want to have the index of P3, so that will be uh, Pete Black, which returns an integer. So that would, so, yeah, it will return the, in, uh, the index, so index of P3, and then simply print index. Okay, so size in D3, index of P3 is 2 in this case. Why? Because it's the third element in the vector and therefore has index number 2. Okay, uh, there. let's see if I have covered everything. Um, there's one other way of inserting a object in the vector. So, so far I've been using the add, but what you can also do is you can do the insert element add. So then you provide the object that you want to have and indicate the index. So in this case, let's say if I want to do it at index 1, uh, which is currently taken up by Jane, so John will be 0, then Jane becomes 1, but now I'm forcing Pete to become 1, which by right should make Jane index 2. So basically the object gets pushed to the back. Okay, so that's insert element add. Provide the object name and the index. So what I will do now, okay, I'm going to stick with the size, but then I'm going, but now as 
and to wrap this up I'm going to use an array to print all the objects uh, inside the vector so i is uh, vec1 dot size and continue to loop while uh, i is smaller than size uh, for each loop increase i by one so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use a system auto print line and print the index value for index followed by i and then well a space followed by uh, vec one dot get a value from index i and then straight away get the name or if I yeah anyway I'm sure you will understand it so now if I go and print this it will basically print the whole uh, content of the array in the sequence array vector in the sequence they are in okay so size is 3 the value for 0 John Smith Pete Black is indeed on index 1 because that's where I pushed him and Jane actually got bumped to index 2 so yeah so that that's another way of inserting things if you don't want it to be necessary at the back you can do uh, insert element at so i think uh with this not not so smooth video i have pretty much covered everything there is to say about vectors so i uh, hope it was helpful and see you next time mm -hmm.